I met Rosemary uh, 2009, close to my birthday. My birthday was February 8th. And by that time, I remember I finished the book, The Field. It's called The Field by Lynn McTaggart. And until then, I was thinking that aliens would be, of course they would be there, but they would look like anything but humans. Why would any, any, why would any aliens look like humans? That would be like just too trivial from my perspective. They would look like clouds or anything else, but nothing familiar. And then I finished the book McTaggart and I thought, maybe there is something in, on YouTube about aliens. Let me check it out. And I discovered a lot of interesting things, and maybe next day I googled uh, local UFO, Rochester, Rochester UFO, and I found UFO group, and I came like in the next few days, maybe within a week, I went to UFO group, and it was Rosemary speaking. And that was for me like a, uh, the introduction. She has amazing experiences, and it will explain why you do that. Um, now, soon I wrote the, the book. I started from as a presentation in 2009, and then gradually I made it into the book. So by 2012, before the December, I, I published. And it was based basically on Rosemary's stories, plus Bashar, plus a little bit of everything else. A little one, raw material, um, um, and classical channelers like Priyadin Agenda and so on. But uh, Rosemary was, was right in the beginning of my uh, introduction to the alien. So I think that's all I wanted to say. And yeah, and I did extensive interviews of Rosemary, like maybe about 10 hours interviews in the garden we sit in. It was wonderful, published on YouTube. And now I, I cannot find it. It just was deleted from YouTube and deleted from, from my archives. I, I'm not surprised though. All right. So, so yeah, I'm not surprised. So, with that, I say, you know, um, Rosemary is the best experience. I learned several experiences, but Rosemary is the, the best experiencer I, uh, I, I did. How do you translate it? Good luck. I had a good luck to, to, to come around. So, I, I give you the microphone and. You know, make it a dialogue, invite questions as soon as you can, and people, yes. people will, will, will ask questions. I, I won't go into a lot of me, <clears throat> detail, but the reason I have these books in my lab is very important. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm uh, probably my new throat. Um, the gentleman that reversed me, because I, I, I knew at 11 years of age, that I was not from here, that I was incarnated to be here. And I remember they said they had to take most of my memories away, or I wouldn't be able to be here and do what I was supposed to do. And I refused to leave unless they let me remember most of my stuff, which was probably a big mistake, because it was very difficult to be here. Um, the gentleman that, that did this work with me, his name is Al Ward. The man is now 95 years old. He's incredible. He is the oldest hypnotist there is, and I'm going to pass these around. And here are some of his cards, and he wrote a funny book too. But pass these around. He lives in, in uh, San Bernardino, California, and he's an incredible healer as well. So, when, rather than repeat a lot of information about what happens in an abduction, you probably heard the same stories what, hundreds or thousands of times, I will just go over the highlights. When I was very young, I, I spoke a lot to the, the people other people couldn't see, the, the entities, the beings. And when I was very young, before school age, we had a, a good year blimp type thing come over the house. It made no sound, my cousin screamed, ran into the house, and I just stood out there and looked up and went, 
oh yeah, this, this is great. And I was just so happy. But then the next thing I remember, I ran in and my aunt and my cousins were like frozen. And then they started up. So they control time. They, you have no idea what they can do. They can stop time right now. They could have been in here for a half an hour with us frozen. This is how they do it. They are the guardians. They are those that watch over this earth. They never left. Do you understand? They never left. They have been all around. They are so highly advanced. They are, they are like, they come from this slip dimension. There are layers and layers. It's, it's hard to describe in words. They think infinity. And anything that you can imagine, it is. It's called all that is. Now, they are all around. They have ships or vehicles or whatever you want to call them. You just can't see them. If you had, if you took, um, they vibrate at a higher rate. This rate of uh, density is a slower vibration. So it's almost like a prison. Okay, so we have our um, energy, main part of us, our light, I call it our light, which is encased and incorporated into this, okay? And they are, they have their light, but their, their casing is more malleable because the, it resonates at a higher frequency. So they can basically take on different forms as well. They, they can do that, right? Um, now, I'm going to go back to when I met Al, I was like, oh, like, you know, I gotta, I have to know more, because I'm just stubborn, to say, the, to say the least. And when he started to put me under, all he did was touch me and I went under. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I started speaking some ancient language, a very, very ancient language, thousands of years old. ancient language and it came out so fast and a man from India came in and he said that's a language so he looked it up and it's a dead language that hasn't been spoken in thousands and thousands of years so I don't remember if it might have been Sumerian or Arcadian or one of those that, that people just don't speak it anymore okay um Anyway, that's not important. Um, the important thing is, I I started um, knowing, who, remembering who I was, and my name. Before I came here, I incorporated into this body. Um, I have a body there, like I described. And it is a, in an encasing because I came here to go through this with a lot of other beings too that are from around, from everywhere, and that a lot of you have incorporated here as well. Um, my name is Da Nata, Da Nata. Okay? So, I guess that's the language. It means something. Uh, a position or like a, from where I come and my father is one of the commanders and I, I know it sounds oh yeah you know like somebody would say I was clear back or a little way but I know because I I feel like half the time I think I'm crazy right but I keep getting these confirmations and um, 
I was never supposed to speak until now. Because if I wasn't supposed to be speaking now, they would have stopped it. As Max can attest to, they erased the stuff. And other times when other things, when I tried to speak or talk out, um, they would shut down entire electrical systems or whatever. We're at a time now where great changes are coming upon us. And I don't want anyone to be afraid. There's been a lot of, you're going to be lied to a lot, okay? You're going to be told to be afraid. There, I know the government, I was told the government made a deal, a bad part of the government. There was a good part too. They made a deal with some bad people, all right? And the people that made the deal were bad to begin with, so it's gotten uh, this planet into quite a mess. <coughs> but we've had people here. I'm called a monitor. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Okay. I'm like a living recorder. The human body is a sophisticated machine. And the DNA that is considered junk DNA also has a purpose. You just don't know what it is. In my DNA, it records things within so, you know, so many miles or whatever. I don't even have to be there. It is recording it. It is, I don't know how it works. I'm not a scientist. But this is what I was told. I, I heard of this other woman talking and she said she was a monitor. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was also in the military with her. I went to boot camp with her. And I've been debating, I, I need to call her because I remember talking at great length with her. And a lot of these uh, people that are called whistleblowers, I'm not going to name names, they come forward. I'm like, I know them. I've had long conversations with these people. But I, I don't like going public. I like my anonymity. Um, there, a lot of people have had experiences they don't remember, or you might have had a sense of something. How do I even describe it? Because there's so many different races, or I don't want to say race because, like the the group that I'm with this, when I go on the ships, I've seen so many different beings. There's not just the greys and the, and the smaller greys and the human-looking ones. There's orange-skinned beings. There's blue-skinned. Anything you can imagine, they're, they're there. And I saw one woman, and she was like, her head was like a basketball, you know? But it was like beach color, you know? And I mean, anything you can imagine, it, it can be. Any form of, of you know, getting lost. Um, oh, man. I then, they took me to, I was getting visited on a regular basis every 49 days. And I would get put through, I would call them scenarios. It was like, even as I am, I had to be tested here, all beings, all entities get tested as part of, it's part of growing. And being in a human body, this is a very difficult place to be in this world. It's, it's, a, it, they, it's heavy. It's a very heavy place. Okay? And so I would go through testing, like uh, personality testing or spiritual testing more so. Like, they would create, um, one time they showed me, oh, these beings are really evil and we're going to drop this poison on just a small amount on the planet and the wake up. It's just that, that, just that race of being. And 
they change shape and you don't know where they are, but this will kill them all. And, and I'm like, oh no, you know, like, grab this to my grand. And they just looked at each other and they went, eh, I passed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's silly things like that, you know? They seem stupid, but there's a greater purpose. Um, I, they brought me to a planet another time. It's a newly terraformed planet. And this is where they have all the kids, you know, the hybrid kids. Okay, so there were all these like teachers, you know, and kids of all different ages, and they were all around, and the teachers were teaching them, and and it was it was incredible to see because they were uh, being, uh, children of um, different uh, levels of. Hybridization. And we don't even think of it that way. I mean, we just look at each other like, um, yeah, okay, you know. I met reptilians, I've been like this close, and they purr. Uh, where's two? They purr, right? Yeah. Like a rattling, like purr. <laughs> when they're happy. <laughs> They can, yes. They're chest rattles. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of like a, a cat purring. Yeah. Um, I was just teaching this reptilian purring like a couple of days ago. You were? Uh -huh. It calmed it calm me. Because I was all freaked out and he started purring and I said, calm down. He said, like, that's okay. You know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was startling. But I've been taken by my people and I've been taken by the the military as well. Underground, I've been underground and all of that. So, you, you know, if you've had experiences and you're getting confused because one minute they're good, next minute they're not so good, it's because you're being taken by two groups. You understand? How many people are here? Was there a story about saving the race? Yes. When, when, they, when I was 11 and they took me on the ship, I had the, it was the tall, Right? And he said, um, this was before I had the memory of who I was. He said, um, he said, congratulations, you're chosen. And he said, um, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I asked if he was God. He said, no, but I love God. Cause he said, I'll show you who I am. And these colors that were like, you, I felt like I'd reach out, reach out and touch the colors and they they move like ribbon around him, like radiating. <coughs> and um, I remember I asked, I don't know if I already said this, um, are you glad he was no, but I love God? Okay. So anyway, he said that I was chosen and all that and then he said, that they need to save a race of beings. And basically they need to save mankind. Okay? Um, so I he asked if I would volunteer to do this. Because on this level, as a human, I have to volunteer. Even though I volunteered to come in as a human, then as a human itself I had to volunteer. There was different levels of, of this. So I said, yeah, of course, you know. And I didn't feel like I was 11. I didn't feel an, like a physical age at all. It was like my, just my being. And when I was on the ship, um, well, I had the physical, they put the implant in, usual, but then I would, in the center of this ship with, in a circle with these beings that were biblical in nature and I know who they were. They were Ezekiel, Moses, um, oh my gosh, I'm nervous, so I'm trying to remember the other one's name. They were these, oh Noah, Noah was there. There were other biblical characters but I remember those. They had the robes on. We were standing in a circle and they were showing me pictures 
of the events that were going to be happening on the earth. And I was weeping because there was, there was just horrible things. And the, everyone, the, the, the emotion was so high because you could feel all along with the suffering. It was unreal. Anyway, then they, I remembered that this was my family and I didn't want to go back I didn't want to come back here. Come on. I did not like this place. It was so heavy and hard to be here. And um, they said that I had to. And I know my father said that I had to, you know, you know, I had to come. In my life over there, I don't roughly 300 and something years of age, about middle of 300s, which is considered very, very young. So I'm very inexperienced where I come from, very young, and um, it's like very new for me, you know, this whole thing. Um, so I made a lot of mistakes, which we all do. But anyway, um, when they said I had to go back, they had they said you know they had to make sure I forgot that I couldn't remember, and I I, I said no, I can't, I can't go back. When I refused to go back, they couldn't force me. But they're like, yeah, well, if you don't go back, this is gonna happen. You know, it was important because I made, you know, I made an agreement to do this. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I said, I'll go back, but I'm going to remember. I want proof. So they said, we'll, we'll give you some proof that you weren't dreaming, that it's real, and he'll have your proof. And let me back. So I woke up on my bedroom floor and I went, body went right up, went to the window, and I saw the UFO, and I watched it, and it was like saying goodbye, and it just, it was like a slice in the sky, and the next morning, I said to my mother, hey, mom, you know, I started trying to tell her what happened, and she goes, your grandmother watched the UFO over the field last night for se several hours, <laughs> so I went, and I've always had witnesses. When I've been visited, I've always been, I've always had people with me that will attest to it. And this times I don't remember a visit, and they do. So it goes, but I, I was, I had a calendar at every 49 days that I was getting visited. And there was a lot going on I had so many experiences, I can't even remember them all. Can so, you tell about uh, how you drove the car through another car? Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> it happened twice. Um, one time I was coming back from Rochester, I lived in Cataraugus, and my daughter was in the car with me. And we were trying to take a, a left hand turn, and it was snow banks on both sides, and behind us, a great big, huge truck. It's, it sped up like it wanted to hit us. And there was a car coming the other way, so I couldn't turn. And my daughter and I raced and I screamed. I go, it's going to hit us. And then we, we just went. And I looked down and you could see it go right through us. And she goes, oh my God, oh my God. And I said, she goes, did that truck go through us? She goes, yeah. I said, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> she goes, no, I didn't. She said, <laughs> so we're freaking out. And I was friends with uh, Joe Nyman at the time. And I called him up and he'd go, oh yeah, that happens to a lot of people that, you know, have these. And then I was driving down 90 with a friend of mine that didn't believe a lot of my stuff. She thought I was just kind of off the wall, you know? Dodie, she's passed away now, but she's driving and we're coming back from the reservation and it was raining out. And we're on this, um, 
hill area where there's a huge drop off and a great big huge truck is coming up, you know, the big tractor trailers. And we had nowhere to go. And this thing is coming up and she's going, oh my God, oh my God. And she's kind of, I was, I said, don't move, don't move. Just stay straight ahead and hold the wheel and don't move. And she's like this, frozen. And we're watching this truck go through us. It was, you could see, see it blinding into the front of her car as it goes. And she, and, and she goes, uh, that almost hit us. I said, what are you talking about? It almost hit us. It went through us. She goes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and she's like shaking. This, she's like, this is your fault. <laughs> so she had to pull over and I had to drive because she was so shook up. And I'm just calm because I'm used to this crime, right? So I said, Dodie, you can't tell anybody about this. Nobody's going to believe you. She went to work the next day and she was telling everybody. She's a waitress. They're like, yeah, Dodie, yeah. 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 And uh, one of the researchers, um, it was a UFO researcher at my house, and I told him about it, and he's like, well, you're so calm about it. Dodie came in, and, she, and I said, well, yeah, she was with me. And I said, Dodie, tell him about the truck. So she freaks out, and she's all dramatic, and he goes, I believe her, but why aren't you acting like her? I said, because I'm used to it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, my question is, the best thing ever done. Anybody questions? I have a question. Uh, you didn't uh, specify which species or which um, place that um, you came from. I come from um, not this universe, but a universe that's like, it's like parallel. Like, it's a place called Valenta. You've never heard of it. It's, but it's the best I, way I can pronounce it. Most of the people I know were telepaths. Uh, of course, we do speak, but there's a lot I don't remember, and there's a reason for it. Okay. Um, I remember the thing I remember about my father, and this is the weirdest thing. It doesn't make sense to me. I know he's very tall, I know he's got blondish hair, and it, it almost looks like he's got like chain mail on, but that just doesn't make sense, you know? I don't know if anybody's heard of it, um, but it, 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 it just rings true to me. And, but I can't see his face, and it's, and it's funny because my guide, I've only seen his face when he presents himself in a human form um, the one time, but usually when I when I go turn and I see his chest area, it's right there in front of me. And whenever I go to look up at his face, he just evaporates. So it's kind of like the same deal when I think about my father. Um, and I don't, I couldn't even tell you his name. I just, the, just the sense of being. Um, but the thing that I can tell you is this. If there is a lot of monitors, there are probably about a million of us on this planet. Okay, close to that. It is not something, you know, like rare. It's common. And there's a lot of people here that are probably incarnates as well, but you may have a different purpose. There's a lot that a lot of people are not going to remember because you wouldn't be able to be here if you remembered. You wouldn't be able to function and do your job. Do you understand? Does anyone have any questions?
Well, what do monitors do? They're like living recorders. So you're recording everything that's going on during your lifetime around the world? In your corner of the world? In my, world my area, in my circumference. But it goes beyond what I can visually see. It's within, um, for me to tell you in miles or whatever, I, I couldn't tell you. But I know it's it's within a certain area. And the, thank you. And the vision that you were shown about what's going to happen in the world, are you using text? Is that when you were 11 or a little bit older? I was 11. So how have those things panned out? Are they still going to happen? They have, most of them have. But the last thing is what we're, we're stopping. The last event is what is being stopped. And if it can't be, then people are going to be removed from the planet. Who's stopping it? The guardians. The guardians of all it is. Okay. These, these people are beings. One thing I want to tell you, Ascended beings, I know you hear that term a lot, ascended. It's not a certain race. There are so many different types of people out there. So many life forms, you would not believe it. And there's good and bad everywhere. And there's highly ascended ones in one group, and some that choose to go the other way. There is evil out there. There is evil. And I'll tell you, just don't give it any power. Send it love. Send it forgiveness. But it's okay to be righteously angry. That's all right. It's also all right to fight for what you believe in. But you're going to not, you cannot let the innocent be harmed. Protect the innocent. Do you understand? It's a very fine line. Can you, can you talk more about the guardians? This is very hard to use. Uh, I've experienced uh, the Native American ceremony and just around that time in my life when I was immersed in their spirituality. Uh, we call them the grandfathers and the grandmothers. And they're ginormous beings. And you just like wrap your arm around a leg. And I, and I kind of came in color with what I feel like was a guardian spirit at one point, um, driving. Uh, I was in Montana in the Rocky Mountains, I was living there, and there was dead deer everywhere from the hunters. Just, you know, just, and I was like crying and praying for them. Like, it's still dead, like, yeah. because it was such a waste of life. And I could feel like through the flames, like this. Big bee walk over to me and look at me in my car and I was like, oh shit, I don't want to crash. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, just kind of nod to me like, I've got it. It's okay. That was a guardian. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they can present themselves any size. There is no limit. Time space is malleable, especially to them. I've been with them and they can create a time bubble. So, they can have, they could be, let me give you an example. Out in that parking lot, there could be, in a time bubble, could be, a, a, like, say, a visitation going on. And we won't see it because we're in a different time bubble. Like, it's hard to try to describe. Like, all right, here's time space. Now they come in and they have to work in a certain area, so they'll create a bubble. You won't notice it because as you approach it, you know, you're not going to notice. It's just physics. <clears throat> they do that when they come down and visit. Go ahead. I just want to comment about that because I have um, Dish TV, but I have pause, rewind, and sometimes. When you hit the when you hit the pause button, I go to the bathroom. You hit the pause button. A little timer starts going. A little timer starts going. I've had on multiple occasions where that timer just stops, and I'm talking to a being. I'm talking to someone, and once that 
we're done. I, I mean, I'm sitting there and looking, I'm like, why, why isn't my TV, why isn't it moving? Why isn't it progressing forward? It's because I was put into a time bubble. Right. That's exactly what I believe. It's because oh, yeah. it, it's, it's stopped. And it happened on multiple occasions, multiple occasions where it, it, the information that I was getting was some, you know, nothing had to interrupt it. And so I, was, I believe I was put into that bubble. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story like this. Um, I used to get picked up by the kids. <laughs> All the kids. Um, I got picked up with a young lady, hybrid, you know. I don't know if she was a hybrid, she might have just really been, she just wasn't really human, okay? But she had a human appearance, but not really. I don't know, I, I don't know, how do you describe that? She was unusual. Anyway, um, then I was brought to this place, this part was fuzzy, then we drove in a car somewhere else, and then we were in this mall type area, but nothing looked familiar, this was another country. It's daylight, okay? Where I am, it's daylight. And I'm walking through this mall area with now human looking people, and people are yelling outside, look in the sky, look in the sky. So I ran out of this mall, nobody's speaking English, but I understood that, you know, look out, look out, whatever. Anyway, I go out, there's this ship, and I'm like, oh, you know, am I supposed to be on that? <laughs> Did I miss it? I don't know. So I'm, I'm walking out, and I'm looking up, and they hit me with like an invisible beam to start pulling me up. But I'm like, why don't they have these people knocked out? Then one of the civilians, a guy, he was trying to save me and he grabbed me. And I'm like, no, no, let go. Come on. <laughs> and he got pulled in. So he is freaking out. So they brought us to a rooftop. And I had these two um, hybrid girls. These I knew were hybrid. They were red, little red eyed girls, like young ladies. And they were twins. And I looked at them, I said, oh, twins. And they said, yeah. And I said, nice. <laughs> I went, are you my kids? And they said, no, but we know your kids. So anyway, this poor guy is freaking out. And I go over to him and I'm like trying to calm him like they calm us and I'm not, I'm not doing it. He's freaking out more. They, so they told me to back away and they did it. They just put him to sleep, touched him. And the poor guy was, freaking out. And anyway, I looked up and there, you know, they have the cameras all over Europe and even the U.S. too. And I pointed, I'm like, uh-oh. And I pointed at the cameras. And they said, don't worry, we've got all the cameras. we got it covered. So anyway, they said, oh, thank you. So they said, um, they had this, they took out this device and at the time I was a lot heavier than I am now, which is, <laughs> anyway, so they, it, it looked like a weighing thing, and they said, well, stand on there, we get to get your measurements, you know, body readings, and I said, I, I'm not going to fit in that, oh, it'll adjust, <laughs> so I remember, you know, just setting it into it somehow, it was weird, and it adjusted, and then they hand me this glass, it wasn't really a glass, it was a container that had the liquid in it, you know, that brown liquid, and that stuff is called. I said, what's this? And they said, well, yeah, that's your polyurethic acid. <laughs> so, oh, okay, i like to know what this stuff is, so, all right, I drank it. And um, I knew it was to help me, you know, it's for the, we were going to be shifting. Um, so I drank that, and then, um, the next thing I remember, we were in this area, and they, they had a bunch of the kids, they were like teenagers, young, young teenagers. They were visiting Earth, and they wanted to get, walk through the malls, 
the shopping areas in their earth outfits. That was an experience. Well, they wore the um, belts that where nobody could see them. You wear a device and it changes your vibration, so you're out of phase. Just you know, it's just a fraction of a second, you're out of phase and nobody can see you. So we're walking through this mall, and they've got clothes on that are quite interesting. <laughs> Winter boots with a summer top. You know, plaids and you know, the colors don't match. They just put on what they like. And it'll be different eras, you know, like, and they had a lot of the, um, what is that um, thing that was very popular? The kids were going in. That um, plaid with the heavy buckles and. Gothic? Gothic, yeah. They had a mixture of Gothic with. Um, Sandra D. <laughs> it was very interesting. <laughs> but they had fun. That's all that mattered. And so we were walking through there. They, they had them all. They came back, and I remember sitting there, and there was one of the smaller, they're not grays, they're more like off white. And I just like touching them. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there, and I was, Can I touch you? And he goes, Yeah. So, you know. So I'm like rubbing his arm. Because I like the see how they feel. They're texture. I'm a touchy feely person. You know, like, oh, you're interesting. Can I touch you? <laughs> uh, that's what I did with the uh, reptilian I met. I was like, all over his face. <laughs> and they, they felt like a lizard. Yeah. Um, anyway, then I don't know how I got lost from these guys. I got, I, want, I got lost from them. This sounds like a crazy story, but let me tell you, weird stuff happens. With, they're just people like us, you know? They're just people. So, I got separated. I don't know. I think they did this on purpose to see what I would do. So, I'm in this country. Nobody speaks English. It's daylight, and I'm not dressed right. You understand? I think I'm in my, in my pajamas, and I'm like, behind this building, I'm like, near the water, and I remember the uniforms the cops were wearing, because I'm like, I gotta go to a club because I gotta get home. It's all I could think of, you know? So I started walking towards this police officer, and I get grabbed from behind by one of the females. No! And she's like, oh, come on, come on, come on this way. And my daughter, here, here, living with me at my house at home, and she was at the computer working. And I, when I was initially taken, I was taken from the living room on the couch. All right. So she brings me back. I, I don't remember how I got back. There are like there are spots missing, but I remember she brings me back, and I'm going, oh, thank you, thank you. I was just glad to be home, right? And. My daughter knew we were being visited, and she's going, she's like, get the computer. She's like, I need to stay here. I can't go in there. And I'm like, so I get up. After she left, I got up, and I went out with the kitchen and got, got a glass of water or something. I don't know. And I said, God, the weirdest thing just happened. And she goes, who was that in the other room? I heard a woman's voice. So she heard the woman talking to me. At first she thought I was talking in my sleep, but then she heard, heard the woman talking, so. Um, uh, uh, we are, uh, this, this workshop, we are very heavy on uh, telepathy, mm -hmm. and you experienced a lot of it. Can you talk, tell us as much as you can about your experience of telepathy? Yes. Uh -huh. um, when I speak to them, it's 90% of it is telepathic. <laughs> You want to be able to look at the eyes. Um, actually, that's how I communicate eye to eye because the optic nerve, the optic nerve um, is attached to the brain, and that is the form, strongest form of telepathy is eye to eye. Okay. You can do sensation 
but that is like emotional telepathy. I'm a high empath and very tough, very, um, I taught my girls telepathy. Um, and when I was young, I was mostly telepathic, so I didn't speak until later. And um, I had to be brought into a room to say this word. And I remember the woman was like, she knew I was telepathic because I was taken out of class. I think I was in one of those um, MK Ultra things. What? The MK Ultra programs. Oh. Because I remember I had to go to a special reading class, but I don't remember anything about it. I have no memory of my special reading class. The only thing I remember is being tested and she would show me like a picture and it was a basic drawing like a school bus a car pencil you know and she would you know show it and go what is this so I look at her and she goes say it out loud <laughs> so I did and she kept showing me the pictures and asking me to say it out loud. So it was, I thought that was odd. So do you have to do you have to see someone to, to read the mind to connect to connect to the particle? No, I now I can just um, you tell me the person's name, and um, sometimes I can just like if there's one one person with that name, I can locate them. I can see what they're doing. Um, other times, I can connect to them mentally. I don't like doing that. It's an invasive thing. Um, but in the normal telepathic conversation with aliens, do you usually look at them? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, but they can also communicate with me through the implant. Mm -hmm. question. Yes. Three questions here. Yes, I have a question. Um, there are a lot of beings helping here, which is pretty much amazing. But I'm really curious how it's possible that one universe needs to help another universe. Because we all come from the same creator. We came from the source of all that is. Okay? All that is is encompassed. It's infinity. It's, it's one consciousness. When I've had two death experiences, and I actually was able to go into the Akashic record, and to describe it would be very difficult. It's like it's like uni almost like each being is like a universe in and in and of itself, and you see lines connecting everything. It's like it's like a webbing of all this consciousness that because time. We experience time linear, but time, everything exists all at once. And we all exist all at once in many forms. It's so, it's a hard concept, but we are all connected. We are all, it's, it's like um, we came from one I get goosebumps. It came from this one that I call source of all that is. And the source of all that is, and I know the Son of Man came from source of all that is. And he worked, was with the Guardians. I met and spoke to Yeshua and Yosef in person when I was going through something very traumatic. And I saw, I spoke with him, I saw his face, and I know that young woman that has the K in her name, she does the drawings of him, that, that's him. And when they did the shroud, that's him. When I saw him, his hair was shorter. But uh, to see him face to face is just... Um, the love that comes off this being is... You can't describe it. And you fall on your knees because... You just do, I mean... He is pure, unconditional love. And he is our father. In many, many senses of the word. 
like the source of all that is comes through you. Do you understand? It's a hard concept because there are so many religions out there that try to teach something, but the, the main thing, if everybody's worried about ascension, but love one another, and the main thing to learn is compassion. You be compassionate and care for one another, and then you're doing the work of our Creator. There's two more questions. It, it, um, I have a lot of nerve damage 
you know, like um, nervous system damage. And that's a part of it with a lot of experiencers, so. But I know you're anxious to ask a question. Thank you. Actually, you answered my question. I wondered if you had long-term physical. I have a lot of physical damage. I have, um, what is that? Um, re complex regional pain syndrome. I have an enlarged heart. And it's odd because I've had different uh, illnesses and um, I've gotten cured from them. I was told once when I was in my 20s I had two years left to live and then it just, the thing just fixed itself. I don't know. I had breast cancer and went away. They said, oh, it's a miracle. Well, I got visited and they fixed it, so. In your immediate family or extended family, how do they relate to this? You spoke to your daughter, so they're aware. They, they know, they, they've been visited several times, but they don't like the attention from it. They just want to lead a, a normal life. <laughs> um, I just don't, I just have to be myself, you know. Um, I like to know that I'm helping people. And I don't understand, I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if they think I'm crazy, it doesn't bother me. You're in a room full of people that feel the same way. <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable here. <laughs> but I don't care if people think I'm nuts. I don't. Because people are brainwashed down here. Yeah. One, of the, one of the things they, they said, I'm going to show you the Museum of Man. This was on one of the big ships where they had all these different beings. And he opened up this door, and I look in, and this is one of the small uh, waiter ones, you know. And it was really hot. I guess there was a species up there that needed the heat. And I open up, and I'm looking in this room, and there's these cookie cutter houses, and on the lawns are sheep in plaid clothes. <laughs> and I'm like, this is stupid. I, he goes, yeah, it is. That's what he said, yes, it is stupid. I said, I don't get it. Why do you put... Well, do you know that the elite refer to us as sheep? In the Bible, we refer to as sheep. Well, they don't like it either. The beings, the guardians, they do not like it because of the way we're being treated like cattle, sheep. And the plaid is the symbol of the Illuminati. Do you understand? It was a red plaid. It took me till just recently to figure that one out. And they always tell me, you're so slow. They tell me I'm dense. They keep going, okay, don't, I, they'll go, don't you get this? Because they have to go over. Now, you have to remember, I'm considered young. I'm new at this. Where I'm one of the young ones, you know? Because um, these guys live, I don't know, I don't know, but I think it's thousands of years. Because they're the ancient ones. They're the, um, They've also been referred to, oh, what is that biblical term? The ancients of days. The most ancients, the most ancients of days, or something of that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's different, like, my group, my people, come from this parallel universe, but there are also guardians of this universe, so there are it's like a conglomerate of guardians, each with a purpose. It's, it's, it's like society, you know? It's not, it's not a simple thing, it's, it's a long learning thing. So you're not going to get all of it. Just know that, know that um, treat, treat others well, pray for others. Because prayers, words of power. 
Also, there was this thing I, I should tell you about when you pray. From the heart and intent. And also, say it and release it. Give it to the universe. Give it up to the universe. Then it becomes solid. It becomes real. In other words, release it. You want to go ahead? You, please, please. All right. So my question is, uh, suppose we, are, we will be, you know, in our lifetime, meeting aliens, say, on the ships or here. What is the etiquette? What, uh, what, uh, what is uh, polite and what is impolite? What, what would be uh, appropriate and inappropriate? How are they different from humans? Just, just be kind. Be kind and understanding and don't harm. Because somebody doesn't look... The only thing that I have trouble with with humanity is, um, and this is really not humanity's fault because you look at these fashion magazines and Hollywood and all this other stuff and we're told what is beautiful. What, what is beautiful? You know? And, you know, it's nice to make yourself feel good. If you dress to make yourself feel good, that's okay. But when you look at another being, they could be like um, an insectoid being. Look at their soul. Look at their light. You know, they all don't look alike. That's for sure. But that, that's what makes life wonderful. Because you can learn from them. You know, they have, they have different cultures. And they're very patient. They're like adults, and we're like the children. Okay, they, they're like little toddlers, and they're the grown-ups. Okay? So they, do not worry, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And you, you have more fear with your own humanity, the people that are doing all these horrendous things. So. But they're, they will be taken care of. They are being taken care of. And, and it's, it's, things are starting to change. Now if you, I, mean, I don't know a lot about this, the, um, when the sun releases this, but I wouldn't be afraid of it. And I was told that I would feel, uh, to go out into it, I would feel an effervescence. It would feel like a, a weird effervescence. It would be a strange feeling, but not pain. Like a burning, but not a burn burn, but like a fizzle, fizzing. And, and that's how it'll change it. So do you expect it in our lifetimes? Oh yeah. Oh, oh it's coming like within two years, I'd say. Is yeah, it's, it's from the very central, close. It's coming but, from the central sun? In our, in, is it coming from the, the central? I'm sun. not a scientist. Oh. I'm just a monitor. <laughs> Our sun is, or some other sun? This sun, uh, it, it, it goes through the sun and it comes out, because the sun is almost like a reverse black hole. It's what comes out of the other side of the black hole. That's what they told me. I don't know how true it is, but I could be wrong. Is the sun Excuse me? Is the sun a portal? Yes. As a, it is sort of like a portal. It can be used in a sense like one, but you have to have the technology and the knowledge to... Um, it's like an energy source to a force, but it's also like if you take... It's like when some of these universes fold in and around each other, you will see suns, you will see black holes. Do you understand? Okay. But everything's constantly moving and changing. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask about... Um, sorry. I have to believe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I can you hear me? It doesn't work. Oh, wait a minute. It does. It works. Uh, Rose Mary, I just wanted to ask about the guardians. You've mentioned that a lot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, I watch, you know, I try to learn as much as I can, like all of us do. And I watch Gaia TV uh, quite a bit. And uh, one of the whistleblowers uh, reported within probably the last year or the last few months and being taken to a huge uh, galactic, I think, meeting with different species in which the guardians were supposedly uh, new guardians were, were introduced and the other ones had sort of retired. Um, do you know anything about that? The other ones stepped back. Um, yes. Um, The guardians that they're talking about have already been here. They're just being presented or awoken or a lot of them are monitors. Um, there are others and I don't know what their purpose is um, because I'm not completely fully awake. And I don't like to say the word awake because it's not a word. It's almost like um, when they, they use a part of my brain where there's quite a bit of information stored and that is gradually opening and then all of that will just be. But I've got, um, my brain structure is a little different. So that's how I was able to remember quite a bit. Um, There are different, I know that there's not just, um, I know who you're talking about, and he mentions the Palladians and the Dawns, the Yellow Dawn, Names of the Dawn or something. Mm -hmm. um, Guardians can be any race. It's just their evolution or their like, all right, the way you can understand it, say you join a police force, you meet, you know, you start out, you know, as a big cop, and then you work your way up. And then, you know, say you're a chief of police or something. You know, it's kind of like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're ready to the job. And it's almost like, it's um, not a really a police force, it's, the, it's like guardians, that's all. I, I don't even know how to describe it. So certain individuals will come and go as time goes on? Oh, no, no. no. Um, the Guardians exist all over, all over the universes, okay? Uh, doing the work of the Source of All That Is. And there are Oh man, this is so hard to do. I've never had to talk about it. Um, it's to help through the transition because it's going to be hard. I'm not going to be. I'm going to be honest. It'll be hard. Okay. Hello. Yes. No. Come here. Uh, yes. Now it works. Can you repeat again what's going to happen within two years and how the life of the, on this planet will be affected? I don't know exactly for sure, but the I call it the event. Mm -hmm. The big because I all the experiences were going, something big is gonna happen. Everybody was something's gonna happen. We know it. Now it's called the event. And it's this earth is gonna things are gonna change. And what will happen is you're going to be entering the, there will be people that will change physically, all right? They'll become more telepathic, you'll be able to think of some place and you can go there, just by thought, okay? Yes. The new earth? The earth will be changed to that. That's what, excuse me? And um, the thing, a lot of people are going to be frightened because there's so many people that are, it's the nature of the being. You understand? Because this is the way we were raised. Humans were raised 
to be this way. The, the, the mind carries the blueprint. And when you stray from that blueprint, your mind won't even see what is outside of that blueprint. It, it'll erase it. Do you know that? So it, this is why things have to be done the way they have been done. The uh, gradual stuff. But um, I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how this thing is going to come down, but I know it's, they told me it's, it's coming faster than they thought, okay? A lot faster. I'm thinking this year, next year. So is it updated information you heard in the news? To me, yeah. So you have some contact, telepathic contact? If they're letting me talk right now, then it's close, because they've never let me talk about this before. Uh -huh. But when I was, have the direct messages that it's coming? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They told me, they gave me, this whole thing goes in three stages. We're in the last and third stage. And then they said, we're in it. We're in it. We're in the, we're in the final days. They said, it is judgment day. That's what you call it, judgment day. Because there's some bad people here <laughs> that are in trouble. That are what? Yeah, they're, not, they're in a lot of trouble. It doesn't have to be one. Yeah. Full, full up, and it has to be facing you. Right? It's top loaded. Full up and top loaded. Full up. Hi. Uh -huh. Yeah, all right. So we've had a succession of eclipses, whether in the or solar. And I've noticed small things about people around me. What do you think of those? I mean, you're saying it's coming in two years. I mean, we, it's, there's been a trickling effect. Yes. It is a trickling effect. Like I said, it has to be slow. But um, two years is fast. Honestly. Not really. Because, um, well, maybe if you're just learning about it, but I'm, for me, it's, I'm 65, I've been waiting for this since I was 11. So I, I have to wait a long time. Let me tell you something big is going to happen. It's going to be fast in the sense that there's a lot of people who are unwell. So, there are, and that's why there's a lot of people that are awake, though. You'd be surprised, and that's what the Guardians are for. They're going to be helping, okay? Also, I'd like to know, do you work with uh, creator beings? Excuse me? Do you work with creator beings? Creator beings? Mm -hmm. We're all creator beings. Uh, this is just a quick comment. Um, you're talking about it's very difficult for us to see outside of our blueprints. And two years does seem like a short period of time. Um, and I know that I know everybody in this room has expanded tremendously just in the last year new inspirations and new thoughts and new things that are they're expanding it. But how will it work out? I mean, I, I maybe don't know. No, I don't. Okay. But I'm going to tell you this. Don't be afraid. I'm telling people, don't. Don't be afraid. Okay? It's going to be, I, when I think about it, I just think, I want the word, I want to say it's going to be wonderful. How can you be afraid of wonderful? You're going to feel different. You're going to feel good. Okay? You're going to feel more part of the creator. Um, not so alone. It's almost like you'll finally know who you are. Does that make sense? You'll feel more connected. I, I'm getting them right because I'm getting goosebumps, so. Yes, and to each other. Who's next?
curious to get it to it up. Yeah. Just curious to know. From what I've heard of people who are under deep the hypnotic state, when their higher self comes through, yeah. there have been many, many reports, and I'm sure a lot of people in here have heard them, about when this event occurs, that it'll be like everybody has had sunglasses on, and then up the sunglasses, blinders, well, right, and that everybody will see everything for what it is. And the light workers are being, we're here, mm -hmm. we are here, yeah. to help everybody else that's going to basically not know what's happening, but it's not going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but it will be powerful. Yes. And uh, so, um, a, lot, a lot of these higher selves reported that it would have happened a few months ago. But enough people, I think, found out about it, and they were expecting it too much. They, so they, they slowed it down by trying to bring it in too fast, and that now it's, it's, it's still coming. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to, uh, and they won't give a timeline. They said timelines mm -hmm. are for the 3D linear world. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to put it on. <clears throat> Certain events have to be put into place. It's like it's like all these mechanisms have to come into the right position, and that's it has to do with beings. It has to do with entities here on this planet. It has to do with timelines. We've been through this before. This is the second time. The first time the Earth was destroyed. Okay, so that's why we're doing it again. And when we, the two timelines come like this, they're going to merge, and then it'll collapse. And all of the, the um, so these timelines, this is, this is important to get this timeline hooked up. Okay, so this is, we're talking, all these other factors like the butterfly effect on this new timeline. So if we, we gotta get this right, that's what they're saying. Okay. Hello. Hi. I have two questions. As a monitor, do you have an implant so that everything you're experiencing gets recorded and then sent? I have an I have an implant. It is organic in nature. They did see it on an MRI. It is on my, what is it, um, pineal gland, whatever. But I was told recently that the recording, it's stored in my DNA, what people call junk DNA. You can store a universe on a pinhead. It, it just, you know, it doesn't matter. Time space is relative, you know. You, you can just keep going and going. You, you understand? So there's unlimited information can be stored in a tiny, tiny piece of DNA, like one of those little things that they, you know. <laughs> so it's like I'm not a scientist. It gets recorded and then you pick it up from you periodically to get you. Yeah, they can, um, they can just connect to me. I don't know how they do it. I don't, I don't know. But they, they can, like, talk to me telepathically this way. Most of it's emotion, feelings, and a few very clear words. But unless I'm face-to-face, -face, then I, the communication is very easy. My second question has to do with revelations and the and, and the prophecies about Jesus coming back and um, the center of the, center of the uh, conflict of the world, etc., etc. So, if we're going to have this, um, event. what does it has to do with the sun, sun, sun flare? Anyway, when this event happens, uh, I don't know. I just can't find the congruence between. Well, that I understand what you're trying to say because I'm I don't know when he's coming back. I know he's coming. 
And no. maybe after the event, or does anybody even? Maybe, maybe it's like all going to happen at once. I don't know. I the, there are certain certain things that people aren't supposed to know yet. You know, that's that's how I look at it. But he's coming back, and you will know him. Trust me. Anybody who looks at him, they know immediately who he is. There is no question. It just seems like it's a world's going to be three quarters of the story. What is he coming back to? The world is not, not, not the world's not. That's what we're trying to avoid, and I don't think that's going to happen. That's what, those are scary things. Yeah, you know, know there are some very mean people running this world. That I just, when I, I didn't realize how bad it was. And I, I remember my father up there calling me a child, a spoiled child, really. So I was always complaining about my life. About the, then I, I was going on um, and hearing all these things that were really going on. And I mean, I've heard of horrible, and I've had horrible things happen, but there are some things that are just beyond horror. And there are people that commit these acts, and they enjoy it. And I'm like, what? And I think we're all, we all know what we're talking about, the, the trafficking and, and the abominations committed and the worship of the, of the pure evil. And I, I'm astounded. And it just proves, proves how young I am. Um, what I do, because um, I remember when I first found out, and I didn't cry very often. I cried for two weeks, you know. And I was like, I was, I was ashamed of myself, really ashamed, you know. And um, I think it was a big learning experience, <laughs> but um. I, I wanted to talk to a friend of mine about uh, what was going on with the trafficking and she goes, well, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. And I said, what? What do you mean there's nothing you can do? You pray. You pray and you tell people knowledge is power. You have no idea how powerful you are. You know? You have no idea. Even Jesus said, you can do greater things than I did. You know? You have no idea how powerful you are. You've been told that you were, you were powerless. You've been told all, all these lies. That's the whole thing. Belief and intent. And don't beg for it. Say it is. And it shall be so. Say it. And it will be. And release it. That's the power. Mm. And it's not power, it's creating. That's creation. And it's done from here. With great love. Change happening, and I'm wondering if the teleportation and telepathy is part of that change. If there are other parts you know connected to it, maybe not. The with the effervescence, I had like a mind skip. Testing. You, you mentioned this energy from the sun that would feel like effort. It'll feel like an effort. It'll be, it'll be malleable throughout the whole air. It'll be emitted. Okay. Are telepathy and teleportation some of the effects? Yes. Are there other it'll effects? It'll be effortless. Are there other effects as well that you know of? Yes, you'll have to be careful about what you think. Okay, because some people will be able to create more easily. Um, it depends. It 
15 or like you know people are musically talented yeah. and then other people are just not naturally musically talented okay <laughs> well, yeah, that's me too. well there are some people that will need guidance with um, you know to be careful of their thoughts and you know and not only that but if you're people we, we don't monitor our thoughts that's a good word for it too and sometimes we might be angry and so we just let our mind run with all kinds of anger everybody does it you know then we say no 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 I gotta think this way it's just part of humanity it's part of being human part of the nature so when you go become more telepathic you have to learn to rein that in and what and how to use it more than and just spilling it all over the place. <laughs> well, when I was teaching my daughters, it's kind of, you know, it, I would teach them with um, not eye to eye, but thought to thought. And we would do like, like famous places or, and then we'd add a song or, or we would visualize something and we would send it. And they, they got very good. And one daughter was like, oh, let's play the number game. I'm like, all right, she goes, think of the number, one to hundred. I'm like, okay. And I would say, you should get every one of them, every single one of them. And they were eye to eye. No, she was just standing there. This girl was amazing. She was like six. Incredibly, incredibly uh, telepathic. Any other questions? Alright. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's working. Okay. Yeah, I've had a lot of experiences, kind of like what you were saying. Um, for example, you know, I've been on many shifts, voluntary, not voluntary. Um, I've had a lot of experiences of past lives or seeing um just you know basically alternate realities from here and then seeing a lot of other lives that i have in other forms and um, there's a lot of things that you've experienced i've had as well and i know it's really not easy so my question is what's some good advice to deal with all this stuff here because i just feel like a lot of things you've said i've i've really experienced myself and i know that it's not easy so i'm just asking what's a really good way to deal with it here I would, I would find someone that you can talk to that can understand somebody who also has been through it because it is a very lonely life I understand trust me I've been made fun of yeah it's made me like kind of and not here but when I go back to like the world it's made me a very anti-social person with a lot of people and so I'm just trying to figure out what you're, you're, you're in, in, you stay to yourself a lot well, yeah, just because of all my experiences, too. yeah, it's kind of hard, you know, experiencing so many realities and things going on and trying to be here when my mind's elsewhere all the time with everything else. I, I understand exactly what you're saying, Emma. Yeah. We have Rose. Rose will attest that I, I hardly ever talk to anybody. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rose is probably one of the few people I talk to. Yeah, so I understand. Um, there, are, there are things on the internet, too, where people we can get into these um, safe chat rooms. I, I feel like when I'm looking at you, do you feel like you've done a 20 and back? I don't know what that means. Is that Corey did? Yeah, that's what Corey did. I'm not sure what that means. Do you, do you, do you have a memory of fighting battles? On Mars. On Mars? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're a twenty and back person. Yeah, I've met many of my reptilian aspects. Um, Arcturian, I've gotten Arcturian ships. Reptilian ships, reptilian ones most of the time weren't unpleasant. The Yale was probably my favorite. I've been to Mars, I've been to all these different planets. Um, alternate realities. I mean, Mars. That place yeah, sucks. Yeah. And like, okay. you know, <laughs> being, being places on Earth, you know, and seeing ships come and a lot of bad things happening. Um, 
or for example, one I was on the ship with, Zeta, I don't know if it was Zetas or Grays, because I think there's a difference. I feel like Zetas are more positive, but I, I could be wrong. Well, I'll tell you, those people, when they, when they grow the Grays, there's so many types of Grays, um, and they all say they all look alike. I can tell them apart. Yeah. And, and I recognize them. And the little yeah. guys, too, they're... Yeah, I'm talking like little. Oh, those are, those are talking artificial right. biological entities. Okay. And what they are is they're created. They're, they're created beings, but they do have spark. They have, they have soul. Yeah, because yeah. they, uh, they showed me, it was really weird. I was seeing these monitors, and it was just showing like a destruction of Earth, and it was kind of saying, if you don't help out, and if people don't get this awareness, this kind of stuff's going to happen. And we don't want that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... it's really, Basically the same thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really not easy to, to deal with a lot of this stuff, you know, so... And I mean, I'm really young too, so it's like, you know, I don't have as much, I would guess, I would just say wisdom. So I'm just asking what's some good advice. That's because you're in a human body. Yeah, <laughs> all are, right. I have, a, I have a huge, difficult time with it too, because I get angry, and I'm, I'm like a rotten person. <laughs> but, I, you know, you try to be, you try to be spiritual, okay? And, you know, it's, but you know, when I, when I do, just be kind, just be kind, and that's, and, be, and have compassion. Of course. And, 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 and you know what? Um, I did this thing uh, where I said, and this helped me, because I, I know you probably have, you can't sleep. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah. There's a... Uh, these adult bedtime stories, they're like, it's a woman, um, Estes, something or other, what's her name? Oh, does anybody know who I'm talking about? She'll do like, like, um, it's to help you fall asleep. It's, well, it's for kids too. But it's, um, she, but she talks to you like you're a child. <laughs> and she, she's got the most amazing voice and she puts, she helps you go to sleep. Doctor, so I can get the information to Max and he can get it to you. Thank you. But that, that helped me. But as far as, you need to get into a, um, I get on the internet and, and talk to get into a group. Because yeah. I've been in a lot of audio uh, programs that didn't help. Okay. Um, but just find somebody who's really open-minded, like Rose. Rose is amazing. Rose. <laughs> She doesn't have half the experiences we've had, but she's understanding and caring, you know what I mean? And open-minded people, there's a, you know, 90% of people out there are lonely. We're going back to creator beings. I know that we are all creatures, so that you know, so you know, they know. Um, I'm talking about beings that are from the Godhead. Apparently, there's a council of creative beings, and this Jim said through a channeling some time ago, and that it, that council is aware. Is, there is an awareness of this council at the galactic level, and that's why I asked you that question. I don't know. I don't know about them. I'm just with the guardians. Um. But I know that the planet's been messed with a lot as far as um, a lot of ETs saying that they're gods, you know, claiming to be gods, taking advantage of um, people that are practically blindfolded. Do you understand? It's very mean. I think the guardians are creative beings. Or I think they are the type of beings that you're really speaking of. But I wanted to say, um, much of the information that you're giving today, I have channeled at one time or another. Really? Um, a lot of it. I have never heard you speak this the first time, and I, and I thought what I had was new. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, if you ask people around here, many, much of the information that you've given, is I, I've already channeled through one way or another. But I was thinking um, 
I have a very easy time being spiritual for some reason. I, I feel like I've been very protected in a way. I became a channeler very quickly. It was a very fast process, and they did it to me on purpose to be where I am today. And the spirit of Elijah is with me, and the spirits of, uh, I feel a lot of really helpfulness from them. And I feel a lot of protection from them, too. And so I was wondering why um, people like yourself wouldn't be so protective as well. I think that you should be. Um, but I feel very, I feel very blessed to be able to be here and not feel any animosity or anger or anything displacing for me at this time in my life. Well, I've been protected, trust me. Um... I've, I've had some very harrowing experiences, but that was part of my journey. Yeah. I had to experience certain things because I was young. But I, when I saw Metatron come through you, I recognized him. And it freaked me out. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God, I know him. <laughs> I. I recognize Metatron, I'm like, this guy's a real deal, and I'm like, and I just, the energy, there's, it was just amazing, I just like, oh my god, and I have to say, I was really impressed, you know, because I, I don't get out, I don't get out much, you know. Well, I can attest to Jim being a big deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but also after Metatron, I had to walk a full hour outside. Metatron is one of the most powerful guardians. He is a guardian, Metatron, yeah, you know that. And I was like, Metatron like knows my father. And I was like, oh my God. You know, this, I knew this. I don't, I, I wish I could remember who my father was, but I know that he's like some commander thing. And I, I just, but I don't want to, just say something because it feels comfortable. I want to be positive, you know? And I, I really like, I'd like to see you, this young man here. Um, if you don't like to leave your house, you know, talk to some people on the internet. Because I actually was trying to find out for myself about the, um, I wanted to find out more about the, um, EMP Ultra, because uh, I know I'm, I know I've been through it, because I can handle any weapon that I've never been trained for. I was in the Air Force, but I can handle all kinds of weapons, and I can shoot a gun, bullseyes, you name it, knives. I was never trained to do it. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So it's like I can go on and of all this stuff, you know. It's like like a spider web of stuff. For the past year, I've just been researching MK Ultra, all that kind of stuff. Just been really into just digging into finding out. I just feel like there's something about it. And then I know this isn't really connected, kind of, but uh, about two months ago, I had a really weird dream that I was kind of like a history guide, but I was guiding people in this place, showing the downfall of the Illuminati on Earth. And I thought that was very interesting. It could have been like um, one of those, uh, you know how like time space is, um, there's like little tiny wormholes everywhere. The Law of One's helped you with that. Okay. Understand? The Law of One books. Oh, ah, you have never books. read those, but. Yeah, I, re I read all of Are them they like good? in the past year, and it's really helped me with them. Wow. Yeah. I've I never read them. Um, most of the stuff I learned was from my guide or from them. And, um, but, uh, what else? Well, because I couldn't read till I was in my 30s, basically. Yeah, I didn't speak till I was like two or three and every time. So yeah, it was really weird. So. Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. Mm hmm. So 
just want to say that the same about Chloe. We speak for a long time. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. you, yes. you, my daughter. Uh, uh, no, I know you're talking to me, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not sure. It, okay, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't speak for a while, and people just said it was because I was bilingual, but yeah. I just didn't, I mean, I just didn't find it necessary. I went to speech therapy, but. I mean, it's more like, I just, I still don't really find it necessary, which people find this kind of strange, because it's like, okay, Chloe, you live in this world, you're supposed to just talk, but I don't, I like, kind of, well, I'm an empath, well, I'm an empath, and I like, to, I don't like using words, and even though I have to, and I can, and I can write well, but I don't speak well, so I like to, um, I guess, well, I'm such an empath, but I think that people, there's so many times either not honest with their words or that they change their words to mean something else. And the thing that really did they have a harder time changing that more honest is just emotions, facial expressions, sounds, things like that, not words. So I like to, I would want to just communicate with just like emotions. If you're sad, cry. If you're angry, like just, you know, do something, but don't, I mean like, maybe, you know, grunt or something, I don't know. But just like, I just find it really frustrating and hard and not, I don't find it natural for me to just use words. I don't think in words. I think in images and... Yeah, that's telling in, Yeah, and I, I think in images and I think in colors and sounds and I have sounds all the time, and, but I can't remember voices. As soon as I can't hear someone's voice for five minutes, I forget it. But I can remember tunes. Are you dyslexic too? Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know because I haven't. I, I learned how to spell only a few years ago. I couldn't spell uh, most of my life. I really couldn't. Like, I really, really couldn't. Um, in, I'm, I'm like that too. Yeah, in first grade, I couldn't even spell like the or cat or dog. The only thing I could spell was my first and last name. That's it. Not even my middle name. And I've always had a really hard time with spelling. But um, I have a really good memory, so I've kind of got myself to do it. Um, but I just, so I, I think with emotions, and people don't do that, so it makes it a really hard time for me to communicate because I want to just communicate with my emotions. If I'm sad, I want to cry. I don't want to explain it. I don't want to say, I feel sad, and this, this, this. I just want to cry because it's obvious that I'm sad. I don't need to say that I'm sad. It's like, and I don't like that. But, Angry, huff and puff, and get over it. Just... Yeah, that's an empath. You're a strong empath. <coughs> Excuse me. I had the same issues. I didn't want to speak because why? Why bother? I sat next to a person. I knew everything about them. Why? Why do I talk? Yeah. They could just check me out. And they know about me, exactly. and they were just each other's company. That's how I felt. Children. What do you know about hybrid children? What's the plan for them? Are they coming? They, they're going to help with um, 
help people to adjust to um, different phrases, like, like an in-between. So your mind has a blueprint of what people should look like, right? Um, so when you first get in front of a, like a, a being like a set of gray, it is their energy and their, their mental capacity is so overpowering. You, um, you feel immediate fear. It's, it's a, a reaction. Um, unless they calm you. It's just the way this body will react. Okay? Now, they create the, the hybrid children so that it's like a step away from that. Um, so these kids will come down and they're going to look more human and they will interact and then they'll bring in the grace because the grace just that are working a lot, a lot of people would have heart attacks and they, it would overwhelm some people where they, they just would um, probably turn crazy. All right, I, I'll be honest with you. When I first was initially in front of them, some of the different beings, the very strong ones, um, you are paralyzed. You are, you're paralyzed. Until they say, calm down, because they're so, you know, they'll just go calm. And then they'll, they'll even switch you to a, it almost feel like, like they give you Valium or something, but it's not. It's just switching to a different part of your brain where you're more accepting. Do you understand? And then you're, you're fine, you know? But in this state, in this hypnotic state that we're in, that was created by the Illuminati, by the people that want to control. Um, it keeps us uh, prisoner. I hate to say it. Yeah. 
this was a simpler version of that. Um, and there was a like paper that, it wasn't really paper, but it was like, you could reuse it, you know, for notes, you just clean it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I was taking notes. I'm going to ask, she goes, ask whatever you want. So I'm writing all this stuff down. I'm asking her, and I fold it up, and, I, and then she gave me this device, you know, and I'm like, yeah, great. And um, meanwhile, I'm over in this other place, and this girl's like, I made all these clothes. I'm a fashion designer, she had bubble wrap and something <laughs> else. Because she was fascinated with bubble wrap. Uh, this sounds nuts, okay? It sounds like I'm making this crap up, but I'm not. And she's like, I'm like and she comes out of it. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's nice, that's nice. And it was, oh my God, it was crazy. It was just ridiculous. And I just didn't want to hurt her feelings, you know? So then, we were like, we gotta leave, right? So, um, they're bringing my friend from the other side, and we're get going on the ship, and there was this blonde girl, she looked quite human, and um, they're gonna give me the shot. You know how you get the shot in the back, the, the hip? I don't. Sometimes before the, the ride, you get it, because um, if you're going, something to do with your brain, and uh, your spinal fluid, or whatever. They have to give me this shot in the hip, and it hurts. And um, it goes right into the nerve. Anyway, when they did it, it hurt like crazy. And um, so I, then we get on the ship, and I walk in, and there's two hybrid kids making out on the back seat. They have been 16. And I'm like, I was mad. I'm like, I want to say, do your parents know? <laughs> drive a tractor trolley and want me to give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember her saying that she and, and so they did no don't touch anything. So then the next thing I know, I'm in bed at home. I don't know what happened. Um, could have been the parents came. <laughs> but the next I wake up and I'm like, I got these items and then all of a sudden this guy just appears in my bedroom. And I look at him and I know he's from Andromeda. The outfit, the look, I just I just knew. Now I know Andromeda's a star, but he was the from the Andromedan system, okay? And he says, I'll have to take those things from you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, but they're mine, they gave it to me. I'm sorry, you can't have those. <laughs> and uh, then he just came toward me and then I was out and they were gone. So was he blue? No, he looked like a, you know what it reminded me of? Remember that day that, I mean, that movie, The Day Girl Stood Still? The old one? Rennie? was this? Very, very thin. Very thin like that. No body fat. Very thin. Um, about six foot, over six foot, well, you know, maybe six five. Anyway. And the material that he had on, uh, no wrinkles, almost like a name root type thing. Uh, very, the material was nothing like I've ever seen. But it was, it was, it was like, you know, it was just gonna, it was like a muted brown, like a, like a, it was weird. It was, it was very, very pretty. It was, it was pretty, it was masculine, but it was, it was, um, clean lines. <laughs> what color was his skin? Oh, like, um, like a earth person, uh, brown, you know, like a uh, shade of brown, like, like we're brown, but we're like brown, right? So he was like a, like a beige. Okay. Not everybody's brown, I'm yellow. No, <laughs> they say I'm yellow, because my name is supposed to be yellow, right? <laughs> no, that, 
I like, we're all the same color, just different shades. Different shades, I Until you meet the blue people, or the orange people. There are orange people out there that are like, you know, like a carrot. Dark, like orange, orange. I say Arcturians that are orange. Is it the Arcturians? No one. I see blue. If you eat a bunch of carrots, you'll. What did they face when I described their face? Was it worse? I almost got the orange. Wow. Because I ate so much. Yeah, but after the TikTok. Yeah, it's been really. Yeah, people. What are the same people like that? But I need more. Oh, wow. That's a feed. Um, this guy had hair, thick hair. He had thick hair to like, it was like, remind me of, you know, like the old Egyptian, where they, but this was like a, it was brown with a lot of orange in it, but like a shade of orange, but almost like dark, 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 dark orange. And then his skin was like orange. Let me share. That's the color of orange. The color of orange I'm talking about is like, like darker than that. Like, like gray orange, like <coughs> like a carrot, like that orange over there, like that, like, like, like the orange that, in the blanket. That's an orange blanket, like the orange on the blanket, more orange. I like the umbrella. The umbrella. The umbrella. Yeah, the yeah. dark, dark orange. I see something that's so orange. Like your hands. Can you describe the onions? The onions. Can you describe the onions? I can do. All the individual, right? Sure. Okay. Let's talk about Pleiadians. Oh, have you met? Are you familiar with Pleiadians? How do they look? Oh, I met. I've met all kinds of beings. I never asked where they were from, but I've seen um, like um, like the thinner human human types. I've seen a lot of. Actually, Earth people. And the underground military stuff, I've seen government people and, and military. And then I've seen, uh, oh man. God, I'm to, oh, the green people. <laughs> Not the reptilian greens, but. And I've seen the yellowish reptilians. You know, the yellow ones. And then I've seen, um, they're like, when they stream it to them, I've seen those. And when a friend of mine came to visit, he saw them. He was freaked. They're like a green, olive green, and um, they have large nostrils, large mouth. You know, they're Yoda kind of looking. Have you seen Draconians? I know, no, I have seen, I have not, to my recollection, seen. A draconian, but I have seen a reptilian. What size? Actually, if you were to take a large human male, um, I'd say seven foot, because I was laying down and he was like, like leaning over me, so his face was like over my. And um, when I looked at him, it's like he had the, he looked like a male, like a, like this shape, but put, um, like my Barnabas was more, what's that lizard, iguana? And uh, like there was like the lips, but the, like iguana lips, but shaped like human. And um, and he has the, the uh, reptilian eye, which was orange, for the people that they would, you know, when they're looking up. The slit, and they dilate and get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And um, then he had the, like the, you know, it was more like a, an iguana type skin. Like, like they have the, the scales, but then they, they vary to the, you know. Have you seen cat people? 
Can you take it off? What? Can you take it off? I can't think. I don't know. I mean, pain, it's like it becomes a cycle. I'm not good at that. I'm not, that, I'm not a healer. I wish I would. How about dwarves? Have I seen... Let's see. I've seen so many different things. Elves? Or, uh, my, brother, my brother saw something. We lived in the Bridgewater Triangle and he had a little being that would come out of the woods in this one area we wouldn't go in. Because there was like a there was a place where you can slip into another dimension there. Right our chicken house. And nobody would go there. They're they're all over the place. Uh, anywhere they're in certain areas in the triangle areas. So they come out and torment my brother, this one, and he was terrified. It was only about like this big. And he was alone in the house for half an hour, you know, after school. So that one day he just disobeyed and grabbed a knife and came to the window as I going like that. So he chased it out of the woods and he realized he was in that area that we'd have a play in. And he got scared and he ran out of there. But <coughs> as far as um uh, I sense like elementals all over the place, and every now and then I might see like a tree elemental, and they look like they kind of look like a, like a monkey. And they, I don't know if anybody's ever seen them. They just, they're like on the tree, you know, it's like a tree elemental. They call it naiads, I think. Dryads. Oh, dryads, yeah. Yeah. No, that is Oh yeah, they Space program. Uh, there is a lot of talk about secret space program. How big is it? You know? I have no idea. I I really don't. And I my memories are kind of like um, personalized, fractured, um, centered around what I'm supposed to be doing. But I my feeling is I've got that. Um, MK Ultra thing because I have all the symptoms and there's some stuff I can't talk about. There's something that I can't unless I'm literally in my clothes. Have you visited their planets and houses and homes? Do you know how to live? I know the world? Yeah. Yes. I went to that new planet. The new planet? I went to, and I went to Mars, which really was horrible. Underground. All those tanks, you know what I'm talking about? Um, I was not underground. Oh, I was underground and they had all those tanks and stuff. It's, it is horrible. It's like, um, it's, it's caustic, like a caustic smell. And you walk out of this elevator, you go through those tanks, and you go to a room, and then you go into this place called the White Room. Everything is white in there, and you wear white, all the workers. Then they take you into what's called the red room, you know, the orange room or something, I don't know. But there's numbers on, I haven't written down at home, the numbers on the doors. That's great, that stuff. Wrote it down. But anyway, as far as other planets. So for the Mars, was it the human planet in there? Or alien? That was a military abduction. Human. Yeah, because they were they were military there. You go through the port or you have to fly on a ship? They brought me on a ship. Uh -huh. Yep, I remember when I woke up, I thought it was a dream, but I woke up and I was wide awake. And I'm like, whoa, this is weird. So I took off running and I'm, 
I'm at some military base in my pajamas, wide awake, and uh, getting chased. And uh, they threatened to kill my friend. You know, stop for anyone. We'll, we'll kill her. So, so what if humans were it was human? It's a human, isn't it? A military guy. I mean, they were the purely human base? Or no, what? they were they were some aliens. And then you wanted to talk about the new planet. The homes, their homes and the new planet, you visited their planet. I, I was brought by the good guys to um, the, new, the new planet, this ter the, the young planet, where the hybrid kids are being kept. Okay? And they're being taught. Is that the water? Say it again. The water. Balana. 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 He is in Papa. That's very close to Balenta. Yes. Almost sounds like the same language, doesn't it? Yeah, I think they told us about Palana, where they're making new hybrid establishments. And you said Palenta. But it's very similar. It sounds very similar. Yeah, it's um, mine. It sounds like Palenta, but it's actually Palenta with a B. Oh. A B. But it's it's <laughs> there's like two consonants in there, but like a B D or a B B. I can't. I don't know. I'm not good with language. A horrible language. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I you know it could be. They have this like electric. Car type thing. That's all I could compare it to. And there were like walkways going from square shaped buildings to buildings. So the kids didn't have to go out in the elements. And then I had to go up to this one area. And they had like a coffee table. And I, they were like a regular office to walk into. And I remember I put my shit on the coffee table. And I went, oh boy. And I looked down and I, I was bleeding. And they just went, like, uh oh. And they looked at me like, you know, you know proof. And I, I woke up the next day and I had the shin, the uh, sword. So, is anything else about their life there? No, unfortunately, there's like fractured information. I've seen food uh -oh. on the ship. When I go on the big ship, we were walking through an area and, um, it was time for a meal time. And it was served like a cafeteria. Like they brought it out. And I guess people would just come out and take it and go where they wanted to eat it. But it was like the first thing I saw was it looked like um, something made from like a like an orange vegetable. Because it, it looked like a like squash made into a patty with like orange sauce on it. It smelled delicious. And then there was this green, like almost like a green spinach with some flavorings. And then there was like a bread, but it was like a bread cookie, you know? And there was no meat. Um, and the, when you smell the food, you got hungry. It was very pleasing. You know? Was it the food for humans or for it was, hybrids? It was for everyone who was hungry, I guess. But I, I wasn't allowed to go near it. Yeah, because you know, living um, not on the, you know, because I didn't want to contaminate your food. Are you comfortable? To, I remember you spoke about the bathroom there. Are you comfortable? Oh no, I, I don't get embarrassed. They brought out um. They wanted me to empty my bladder, which was funny, um, before a physical exam. And they brought out this very lightweight white box. Look at the box. And they they just they come up to me in this hypnotic aid voice. You you need to empty your bladder now, don't you? <coughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> they just roll it back and it's just like a normal like it's like a seat when you just 
sentient bladder and they put the lid down and take it up. And that's probably their statement of her specimen. But, you know, I don't remember, I don't know about public bathrooms, I'm sure they have them, but that was my experience with, with emptying my bladder there. <laughs> and in front of everybody. <laughs> no shame, nobody cares, nobody's looking. Oh yeah, like, by the way, are the aliens sex look, looking sexy? <laughs> are the aliens look sexy? And are there any aliens who look sexy to us? I, they, they get, they do, they get, they get like that, yeah, they get interested in people, sure, in that way, yeah. So would they be interested to us? They are very good looking, yeah, even though, I didn't thought their plane was nice looking, so, yeah. I like that he purred. <laughs> Because it was very like, that feels nice. It was like very soothing. It was, it was like, it was a very a different sensation. It was like very relaxing. Like somebody was healing you or something. <laughs> any of them are, are there any of them sensual? Sensual, like for physical senses? That's when they want to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah some of them could be just like, just like people. They're just people. They're people just like us. That's all. So I think we are closed, right? So um, after that, we might want to go and take a photograph if weather permits. Do you want to close with any statement or anything? Um, no, just don't be scared and love one another. <laughs>